So my top 10 best films of 2014 yesterday, now it's time to do the fun list, the top 10 worst films of the year. So like in my top 10 best list, I have to say I have not seen every film that came out this year. I haven't seen The Legend of Hercules, I've just heard that's like the worst film ever, but I've not seen it so it's not gonna, it's not gonna be on this list. And um, another thing as well, I will put the annotations to the videos I did do on these films because a majority of these films I did not go to the cinema to watch because I'm really cheap like that. I watched them online and I'll just let you know, it, they will be kind of reviewish like in this in this video but the ones I actually did videos on I will put annotations to and I know some of the ratings that I did give them in the videos will be kind of different to how I portray them in the video because my opinion of it just like kind of dropped over time but Anyway, just have fun, and that's all I can say, have fun with this list. So here we are, top 10 worst. So coming at number 10 is a film that more or less everyone hated. And I didn't like the film per se, but it's not, I didn't like it, dislike it as much as a lot of other people did. So that's why it's number 10. And then it's Transformers Age of Extinction. Although I found some of the action uh, mildly enjoyable, Transformers 4 was just on for far too long. The characters were boring, they were generic and they were just, just like in true Transformers style, it just concentrates too much on the human characters, not the actual robots fighting. But yeah, this film was just, it's, I didn't find it as disgracefully, horribly terrible as everyone else thought. There was some enjoyment in it for me, but obviously all the criticisms are still there, so Transformers gets number 10. Coming at number 9 is another Michael Bay involved thing of a live action adaptation of a cartoon show slash toy brand or whatever, and you know what it is, it's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Ironically, it's the same problem I have with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles that I did with Transformers. It has some cool action, some cool violence and like car chases and action set pieces. It's just the characters are so generic, especially Megan Fox. Why is Megan Fox in this film at all? Seriously, I thought she and Michael Bay fought, fought or something like that. I thought they fell out. I don't know why, but anyway. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, yeah, it had some cool action. The villains were boring, didn't make sense. Plus the end was identical to The Amazing Spider-Man, so what can I say? Ninja Turtles gets number 9. Seth MacFarlane. You were funny in Ted. You have been funny in Family Guy. It's just when you do westerns, it's just... Not really. It's a million ways to die in the west. Going into this film, I didn't have like masterclass comedy expectations. I just wanted it to be funny because I'm a fan of Seth MacFarlane's other stuff. It's just going into this film, I thought it was all along and the humour was just completely scattershot and miss for me. I mean... It focuses on the romance too much, not enough Liam Neeson as well, I love Liam Neeson, but it just it just wasn't funny, I didn't expect it to be, as, I wanted it to be funnier than it was, so it was disappointing for me, so therefore A Million Ways to Die in the West is number 8. Coming at number 7 is one of the, I think it's the only film this year I actually watched in 3D at the cinema, pretty much because that was the only one they actually offered, they didn't do it in, they didn't do it in 2D for some reason, and that was Need for Speed. I will admit, the car chases looked amazing in 3D, like the cars are zooming past and there's like a big crash, like when the police car crashed into the bus, that was pretty cool, and Aaron Paul was not Jesse Pinkman, but still okay, but the rest of the film, it's just really just plain blah characters, yeah, that's what I'm going to say, blah, they just had no personality, no charisma, and the story was just all over the place, like they're trying to get away from the escape of the government whilst trying to attract the attention of the government or the law enforcement, whatever, it just it just didn't make sense, so Need for Speed gets to number 7. Number 6 was actually the second film I watched this year as well, and I did go to watch it, and I did waste about £6.35 watching it, and that is Grudge Match. It really saddens me that Sylvester Stallone and Robert De Niro have actually sunk into this level of lawness, I mean, Grudge Match, the end of boxing match was okay, I mean it lasted about 2 minutes, but the rest of it was just scatter shot again like a million ways it's just it just was not funny i wanted to go in this film and just laugh at the preposterousness if that is, if that's a word or the preposterous thought of them to get in the ring and fighting again but it just no it just made me cringe watching it so i'm afraid grudge match actually no i'm not afraid grudge match does get number six coming at number five if arnold schwarzenegger is like this in terminator genesis then i'm not looking forward to Terminator Genesis as much anymore, but number 5, Sabotage. 
The biggest problem I have with Sabotage is the fact that it tries to be something it's not. It tries to be a really clever, really well thought out whodunit thriller, when the fact is it's just like, it's a really, really slow film and it's just, it builds up to the climax, you find out who the bad guys are, and you're like, oh bad guys, chase scene, done, end of the movie, thank you for watching. And you're just like, well that was a waste of two hours of my life. Next. So Sabotage, you get number five. Coming in at number four is a film I don't think a lot of people have actually heard about this film, but I watched it online and yeah, it's Automata or Automata. How do you actually say the name? Is it Automata or Automata? I don't know. Automata is what Automata. I don't know. That film. When I saw the trailer for Automata, I thought, okay, it looks like more, pretty much the next Elysium, like an action packed sci fi set in like a desolate future wasteland. But boy, how was I wrong. Antonio Banderas, he was like a whiner and a complainer and a really naive character throughout the film. I mean, he's like, he's getting assisted by these robots who the desert, like, no, I need to go back to the city. He's just like, no, go, don't go back to the city because all the trouble's there. And plus the film was just really, really boring. It went on for so long, nothing, hardly anything happened. When someone shot a gun, you're like, thank God for that, someone shot something. But even when they did shoot something, it wasn't exciting, so Automata, really boring, gets number four. Coming at number three is proof that when you milk a franchise, the more you, the more you milk it, the less good the films just become. It's just a fact. And that's, of course, Paranormal Activity, The March Ones. The March Ones was just, again, it's just pretty much like the other Paranormal Activity films. Somebody gets possessed by the demon, things start happening, uh, creepy stuff starts happening and then the end happens like where they have to go to the house and all the creeps are there It's just exactly the same but like in the hood like from GTS San Andreas or something Which were pretty funny when a, when a witch got shot with a shotgun and she got blown away that was pretty funny But the film was boring nothing happened relying on jump scares all the way throughout this film gets number three Number two is a film that when I was watching it I was just like It was just boring because of how how unfunny and how un not good it was and it should have been a light enjoyable and just sing along film but it just wasn't I was bored out of my head and that was Annie on the rare occasions I do watch musicals I just look for a couple of things I want the music and stuff to be well choreographed I wanted the acting to be really good and like not unrealistic and guess what this film was the opposite of those things. The music was not even that good. The characters were really boring, really, really generic, and just like really unrealistic acting. And I know it's not made f to be serious. It's made for kids, and it's made for all those little kids who just watch the musicals and just like, yeah, sing along, yeah. But at least make it a good film, just in instead of just making it good for kids. So just Annie, I'm afraid you do get number two. But here it is, friends. The number one film. This is the film that angered me and irritated me so much it just got under my skin and just ugh why did this film ever get made number one the worst film of 2014 for me Left Behind I was there watching Left Behind and like I said I was getting angry at this film because it was number one so boring number two and probably the biggest problem this film has so utterly generic I mean the daughter in this film, Nicolas Cage's daughter, she has that same look on her face throughout. They're like really light smile people do and like they, they always blink their eyes really fast when they're looking at someone. It's one of those kind of generic faces. This film is boring, like yeah, generic and all that really bad stuff. So left behind, it angered me the most. Plus it had a re like an open ending like there should be a sequel when they really should not. If they make a sequel to this film, holy crap, it's going to be the bomb of their lifetime. So left behind, you get the number one spot, the worst film of not only this year, but one of the worst films I've ever seen in my life, seriously. Oh my god. So there you have it, my top 10 least favourite films of 2014. More importantly, I want to know what are your top 10 worst films. Put it in the comments below as a comment or video response. Go crazy. I want to know what your worst films are. What do you hate? And to all my likers, subscribers and watchers, I want to thank you for this year. It's been a surprising year for me in some places as well. I'm going to continue doing movie reviews into the new year and hopefully more people will come along. But if you're new to my channel, you're new to this video and if you like this video and you want to see more, then all you have to do is click right here.